Mark 1.1 is an interesting verse. The first thing you'll notice is that it's not a sentence. And that should give you a clue as to its function in the chapter as a whole. Arche tu euangeliu, Jesu Christu, huiu theu. Beginning, and you'll notice that there is no article there, which again is typical in salutations and in titles and things like that. And as you may have figured out by now, Mark 1 1 is really the title, maybe not to the whole book, but at least the first part of the book. But it's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus Christ? He's the Son of God. Now, there's a couple of really important things here, but the easiest one is what is the relationship of Huiyu Theu to Yesu Christu? Well, it's in simple apposition, isn't it? We've already seen this, that Jesus Christ is, in fact, Son of God. Now, there's no article in front of Huiyu or Theu, although there is a textual variant that does put an article in front of Theu, but again, in a title, that is irrelevant. And I would translate it, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, because it's obviously what Mark is wanting to say. You know, when we want to talk about the divinity of Christ, we often go to John, but Mark has very strong arguments for the divinity of Christ because Jesus does what only God can do all the way through the gospel. So right up front, Mark is telling us that he's going to tell us about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that Jesus Christ is, in fact, the Son of God. That's why I would say the Son of God in the translation. But what's really important here is, why is Yesu Christu in the genitive? And we're going to meet a very important concept in this passage. And in The Graded Reader, I go into this in quite detail, so make sure you pay attention to it. We have here the question of, is the Yesu Christu a subject of genitive or an object of genitive? If it's a subjective genitive, what it means is that the word in the genitive is functioning as the subject of the implied action in the noun. Now, I know it's strange to think of a noun having an implied action. The easiest way to do this, though, is to say, is there a verbal form of the noun euangeliu? And of course, there is, is euangelizomai, it's to preach. So, euangeliu is classified as a verbal noun. And so, if this is a subjective genitive, then Jesus Christ is acting as the subject of the action implied in the noun euangeliu. And I just use the word produces to help me. Jesus Christ produces the gospel. In other words, Jesus Christ announces the gospel or proclaims the gospel. However, if Yesu Christu is an object of genitive, it means that it is receiving the action of the verb implied in the noun. And I use the word receives. It's the gospel received by Jesus Christ. In other words, it's the gospel about Jesus Christ. Now, I know this is a long discussion, but the distinction between subjective and objective genitives is really important in your Greek career. So the question is, is Jesus Christ producing the proclamation, or is he receiving, in other words, is he himself the content of the euangeliu? Now, every once in a while, you get into this situation where it really feels like it can be both of them, that it's not only Jesus who proclaims the good news, but he is, in fact, the content of that good news. And so we have another kind of genitive called a plenary genitive that basically is a meshing of objective and subjective genitives together. In terms of phrasing, you would certainly want to put those on their own line, and it's the, it's the gospel produced by Jesus, or is the content of that, and Huiyu Theyu is in apposition to 
Yesu Christu. So the phrasing would be pretty simple like that. But what's really important here is that you kind of spend a little time in grasping what kind of genitive that is and what's the difference between a subjective and an objective genitive.